Kawasaki's Blake Baggett captured his first career victory, leading the Pro Circuit Sweep at the podium at the season over. When the 450s took to the track, there was veteran Chad Reed guiding his 2-2 Motorsports Honda to the overall win. The championship now moves on to round two in Northam, Texas. The Freestone Motocross is set to get underway right now, live on Fuel TV. It's a Memorial Day weekend celebration of motocross live on Fuel TV. Welcome to round two of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship, the Rockstar Energy Drink Freestone National in Wortham, Texas. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Jason Wygant, of course, joined by four-time AMA National Champion Jeff Emig. Fuel TV's live coverage of Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship Racing. We'll get our weekend started with the 450 class. Let's give you the big picture storylines we're going to follow in that division. First, Chad Reed coming out on fire at our series opener last week from Sacramento, California, winning Hangtown with 2-1 Moto scores. So Reed, definitely a championship player. On the other hand, Michael Lessie, one of the series favorites, will not be a big crash in practice. He is out for that weekend and this, presumably out of championship contention. But there are other contenders, such as Ryan Dungey, blistering the track today with your fastest qualifying time. So we throw it over to you, Jeff Emig. Lots of contenders in this series, and really just a great day to go motocross racing or motocross watching. Today really starts the start, or uh, uh, it has become the start of the summer because the uh, temperatures today skyrocketing up around 95, 97 degrees. Um, beautiful day of racing. The fans here in Texas are really excited for this event. Uh, and this facility is just fantastic. I mean, it's oh, a yeah. big track. They do everything bigger here in uh, Texas. <laughs> so it's going to be long, rough track, and a lot of hard laps here today for the riders. All right. Well, let's talk to some of the riders that will be contending for the win today. Let's send it down to Aaron Bates on the starting line. The first round wrapped up in the books. Ryan, you finished up fourth during Hangtown. You're coming in. You're feeling a lot more healthy this week. What's the strategy? I uh, just get good starts and uh, try to stay cool. It's hot out here today. Uh, luckily, there's a breeze. But, uh, yeah, just get good starts and uh, two solid motos and go from there. Definitely even come down to toughness. And Davey Millsaps, third overall in practice today. What's made the difference from last week? And actually, great job last weekend as well. What do you expect out of yourself today? Well, you know, kind of like uh, what Poto said, just uh, two solid motos and, uh, and hope for the best. It's going to be a hot one today. At least we got somewhat of a breeze, but, uh, you know, put two solid motos in and just uh, see where it come out. Win could definitely be a factor for all of these guys today. And Ryan Dungey is making his way, getting set. Ryan, tied in points heading into the second round. What did you go home and work on this week to come in here swinging this weekend? Uh, just really kind of get back to the basics, you know. I think uh, it was nice to get back here or back to Florida and uh, kind of got a solid program there. But... You know, it's uh, just coming off of Supercross, try to get time and um, build speed, you know, just kind of keep trying to progress with getting better. But uh, excited to be here in Texas and looking forward to getting on our way. Best of luck to you today. Well, guys, it's going to be about survival of the fittest. Jason, back to you. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Now, the riders will get a little bit of relief from the heat and humidity because the wind is blowing. No doubt there will be a breeze today. Will that affect them on the track or when they're above it in the air on jumps? Well, we'll see. We'll be racing when we return as Fuel TV's live coverage of Freestone Motocross, coming up next. Could switching to GEICO really save you 15% or more on car insurance? Would Foghorn Leghorn make a really bad book narrator? Who doesn't like celebrities, comedy, and music? The Deli Habit is your destination for the hottest stars, athletes, comics, and cutting-edge musical acts on TV. Watch it weeknights, 11 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, only on Fuel TV. And Fuel TV welcomes you back to the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship. What's motocross? Well, we'll explain how we race it. We're going to watch the 450 class right now. That's 450cc engines in these bikes. We run two races today with 40 riders each, and we'll total up the scores from both races to determine an overall winner for the day. In case we tie through the two motos, we'll break that tie with the best score in Moto2. So that's the rules. Now we want to show you the track. And Jeff Emmett can give you a little guide here on what it's like to uh, 
negotiate a very rough track in Texas. Well, it's rough because they add a lot of soft soil on top of this. And generally speaking, the uh, the track is all in a pretty flat area. Uh, there are a couple of little goalies and stuff to go through. But they have a lot of man-made jumps here, a lot of tabletops. Like I said, that sandy soil that they've added on top. So now that uh, the track is drying out a little bit, um, the track should be a little quicker. Uh, over, uh, you know, Early practice, uh, the track was really deep and soft. But overall, this track is going to get rough. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be hot. It is windy. That affects the riders a little bit here. And you can see uh, Chad Reed here, 22 Motorsports on the line, uh, just trying to mentally get himself uh, ready for this event. Well, these guys are all ready in a way. have been racing here for a couple of years now, so the riders have a pretty good idea of what Texas has in store for them. Let's chat with these athletes about Texas. Freestone is pretty uh, also a really fun track. You know, I, I think I like it there more so just because the dirt's really good. You know, I kind of grew up in that kind of dirt and it's real loamy, kind of sandy. Last few years too there, it's been about 100 plus degrees, which has been pretty tough. You know, two 35 minute motos in the heat, covered in all that gear. You know, you're sweating a lot. I think when it gets too hot back there, you know, one year it ended up being like 110 degrees with 100% humidity. Um, I walked outside, I walked back inside. <laughs> Uh, you know, those days you just you just kind of got to let them go by because they're not going to do anything for you but drain you. My thing is I love the humidity. I just don't like the bugs. So I, I, do, I choose humidity over dryness any day. The, the most thing that stands out is the heat. I raced there only two times, uh, 09 and, and 10. Uh, both times were just really, really hot. You know, we got a right hand uh, first turn, which I think kind of throws us all off a little bit. I think it's a little bit... Uh, a little bit dangerous, you know, so you have to kind of make sure you put yourself in the right position. The start's important there. If you can get out front, get a good pace going, you save a lot of energy, and you don't have to go from the back to the front without cooking yourself in the heat, uh, you can do a lot better, so. All right, so we have an idea of what we have to watch today in Texas, and that is riders riding really fast and trying to last in heat and humidity. Now, one rider who's definitely not a stranger to these conditions is Andrew Short. Jeff, take us through the keys to the race for him, the Texas native. Yeah, uh, Andrew actually is uh, dealing with a little bit of uh, issues with his uh, newborn son. So in that type of situation, you know, everybody can relate. It's always on your mind. So at this point, he really has to put all that stuff aside, block it out, get focused on his job, uh, and then also take advantage of the home race. He lives in Smithville, Texas, not too far from here. Um, so he definitely is going to be acclimated yeah. to uh, this type of weather, and uh, hopefully he can use it to his advantage and put that KTM, the KTM uh, up on top of the podium. Yeah, now Colorado is originally the home of Short, but he makes his racing home in Texas. He's been down here for uh, almost a decade. And in the 250 class, which you'll see later, we have an up-and-coming rider, Eli Tomac, doing the same thing. Uh, moving from Colorado and riding with Short in Texas to get ready for this heat. You see the uh, grid there at the top of your screen? That is color-coded by bike brand. Reds are Hondas, blues, Yamahas, greens, Kawasaki's, yellow Suzuki's, and oranges are KTM's. Yeah, and if you notice to the left of your screen, the rider's right, basically fastest qualifier went all the way to the inside. Dungey was your fast qualifier, and there was a, the hard uh, area of dirt where they didn't really till it up. Um, actually, Porcel's going to have just a tad bit of advantage there. Let's see who grabs the first whole shot of the day in Texas. And it's not going to be one of those middle gates. In fact, from the, it's not going to be one of those inside gates. It's going to be one of those middle gates. I think that might be uh, Jake Weimer grabbing the whole shot and a bunch of riders down here in this tight first turn. Christian, Christian Craig. Yeah, Christian Craig and Weimer who qualified 15th, right? Wow. So he's basically going to be about 15 gates from the inside out uh, with that fantastic start. Millsaps and Reed are there. Millsaps on the outside of the blue bike, the Yamaha, and Reed on the Honda battling with him. And there is Porcel. So Porcel from that extreme inside gate, ready to do battle. He gets past Millsaps. And now Porcel on your left goes past Chad Reed. And one thing that I'm noticing here, Jason, is with this track, you can see the hay bales in the background, those yellow markers, that's, that's what indicates where the race course is. And if you go outside of that, then you're off the track. Generally speaking, the track is narrow this year. And what that's going to do is it forces the riders, more bikes going through the same area more times. And the track is really going to be rough here. You can see this is opening moto here today. And uh, this track is brutal. How about Christophe Porcel, the Frenchman, 
said they spent all day Tuesday and Wednesday doing a lot of testing of that Moto Concepts Yamaha, paying off. He's in third right now in front of Reed, the 22. Jason, last year you called Christophe Porcel the fast Frenchman. Now that he's stepped up to the 450 <laughs> class, he's just the Frenchman? Well, Is he going to have to earn it this hey. season? Is that what you're saying? First half a lap, he was pretty fast. Crafty. We'll see if he okay. can prove crafty How this year like he always did. Christian Craig is barely even <laughs> on our monitor because uh, the young Californian is just out front Taking wheeling off. away. Yeah, yeah, and that is the uh, second generation uh, star. Uh, his dad, Mike Craig, used to race this series as a factory Yamaha rider. This is Team really only the first full pro season for Christian. Broke his back a year ago, and they thought he might be done racing forever. What a return and leading our first lap here and Freestone. And look at Ryan Dungey go by, Jeff. He's outside the top 10. Yeah, and it's he's going to have his work cut out for him. But with getting back to Christian Craig, I, I mean, it's just an incredible recovery that he's had uh, after the injury and to put himself in the position to get to ride with the Lucas Oil Honda and now to step up to a 450. I mean, you know, he's, you know, he's a big kid. The, the boot size has got to be a 10 or 11. And so when you step up to the 450, especially on a day like today, um, or when you're riding a 250, you really give up, uh, you know, the weight is, is an issue. Look at this. Porcel puts the move on Weimer, and I'm going to I'm gonna just stir it up a little bit here. Porcel wanted that ride. He Which wanted ride? to be on Factory Kawasaki. Instead, they gave the ride to Weimer uh, for whatever reason. And now Porcel had, uh, sat out the entire indoor uh, Supercross tour. Well, found a Weimer, ride Weimer, Yamaha. Weimer basically did, too, well, with, an with an injury. But he did get the spot of the team. Porcel just put it to him. This is impressive. Porcel up to second. He's gone through Millsaps, Reed, Weimer to get there. Looks a whole lot better to me than he did last week at Hangtown. What do you think, Jeff? Well, Porcel's qualifying effort was not bad. He was only a couple of seconds off. He was the fifth fastest today. Um, and he kind of goes out and qualifies uh, you know, relatively quietly. It's not like he's out there just banging out lap after lap after lap at the fastest time. He goes out, knocks down a fast time, and then just kind of rides around. Oh, great. Ooh. Gets into that berm right there. You just can see how uh, they're in the background that that the uh, consistency there and the just there's just not a lot of hold to those uh, soft berms like that when you really go in and bury it. So Christian Craig leading the way. Reed has now moved up to third behind Porcel. Weimer fourth, and one of the Suzukis making their presence known in fifth. And, and watching here now that we've got some laps under our belt here, it just doesn't seem like that these riders are blistering fast. But that just tells you how tough this track is. They're really trying to negotiate and pick their way through. Aaron, what do you have on the 22, Chad Reed? Well, guys, there's a little bit of controversy over this past week that started on the tweet boards, if you will, <laughs> between Chad Reed and Ryan Dungey. You'll notice that both of them are running the red backplate. Ryan is riding the number one, and Chad's got the red 22. Chad feels that he should be the one that's racing because he's in the points. Of, pardon me, they're tied for points, but because he won a moto, he feels he is titled to run that red plate. But as you can see, they're both running the red plate as of right now. Yeah, uh, great point. Yeah, they went back and forth with uh, the folks at American MX and MX Sports who run this series. And basically, yeah, they're both points leaders, so they both won the red plate. But Reed's defense is, at the end of the year, if they were tied at points, the tiebreaker is who has won the most races. And right now, Reed has won one, and Dungy has won zero. So I guess I you can it. see both sides of it. I love it. It's all attitude. It's confidence. And Reed is a very mentally strong rider. He's the type of guy that's like, you know, headstrong and, hey, I won the race. Technically, I'm the points yeah. leader. I'm the only one running the red plate. Well, but, yeah, but uh, he likes to stir it up. Reed did not run the red plate in practice today just to get people stirring. He's hey. really going to not run it. And then, lo and behold, by the time the moto started, they had the red plate bolted on. We're talking about it, right? It, it works. Look at this Ooh. battle. Weimer, that is Metcalf, and Millsaps. Great racing between these guys. And, uh-oh, we Porcel here we goes again. Yeah, Porcel and Reed now putting some pressure on Craig. I mean, this is the first time that Christian has led an AMA race at this level. So yeah. fantastic ride. Um, you look at Porcel here, very quietly here, uh, making his way to the lead and really didn't jump on this Moto Concepts Yamaha until what, about, about a four month. weeks yeah, ago, yeah, five weeks like ago. And uh, this is a team that's, that's, I believe, has improved all year long. They've got some incredibly talented, hardworking riders on their team. Um, Porcel, certainly one of the most talented that they've added to their uh, uh, you know, a list of riders and roster. Well, Porcel said one of the big selling points of this team, the manager is David Villeman, one of the greatest uh, French riders to ever come over to the United States and has won plenty of these races in his own right. 
back when he was racing. So Porcel thinks that the opportunity to work with Villeman is really a boost for him, and, and no other team has a Frenchman as a team manager. Hey, so it's paying off right now. You never know. Maybe they have the best baguettes in the <laughs> pits, you know, and <laughs> stuff like that. That's, yeah. Okay. Uh, they can uh, talk to each other in uh, multiple languages. And what a difference. Porcel really struggled last week. It was fast. Huh? Early in the first moto, kind of like this, but not quite to this degree. But he definitely was fighting the setup. I talked to Brent Myron yesterday. He's one of the technicians for that team. Basically sun up to sundown, testing Tuesday and Wednesday, paying off. Well, porcel has got his hands full right now. All the top four turned a 211, basically. Dungy turned a 2086. So Dungy's a, you know, close to three seconds faster than everybody wow. else out there. So Dungy's the man on the move. He proved in qualifying practice that he was the fastest rider. Um, Chad Reed's kind of one of those guys that, you know, he's a gamer. He steps it up for game time. I'm not saying that his qualifying effort was bad because he was two tenths of a second off of Dungy, uh, but uh, Christoph's going to have his hands full right now because I think the further on that we get through this moto, the stronger Reed and Dungy are going to be. Oh, and Kyle Chisholm, that's actually a teammate of Porcel, is down. And that's bad news for the young man from Florida because he was basically racing his way back into shape after uh, bruising his lung in a crash a couple of months ago in Supercross. So that's only aggravating that situation. Yeah, and so here comes our leader. So obviously Chisholm's out of the race. It did seem like he was favoring his right arm, right mm -hmm. shoulder, something. Uh, definitely um, hope that he's okay because uh, such a likable guy and, and uh, yeah, putting himself back into position and he qualified. Uh, fantastic today. He was seventh fastest. Well, we got a three-man breakaway, and the rider in third might be the fastest of that group. Reed on the 22, the red bike, putting big-time pressure on Porcel for second. But I don't know if it's going to be only three riders for long, because you can now see the Suzuki, the yellow bike of Dungey, lurking back and forth on some of our longer shots. And speaking of shots, Reed's going to take one at Porcel all the way around the outside. Taking the long line there, Jason. Let's see if it can pay off. No, he gets back in the roost again. And I tell you, that roost can be so motivating sometimes. As it was the last week when the roost really hurt, this is kind of a wet, sloppy, sandy roost. Doesn't necessarily hurt, but you talk about aggravating you. You notice the front of Chad Reed's bike is just completely brown. There's no more red plate for him. There he Whoa, goes, the Chad Reed. Reed. Oh, they remember that last year. Didn't pay off as far as making a pass, but Porcel knows he's there now. Yeah, because he didn't get over the first whoop. He, he aired it out. But he didn't quite get that next, uh, that first whoop in line where he could really carry the momentum through. But that's going to wake up the crowd. Whoa! Wake up Porcel. Get sideways like that. Well, I mean, Porcel has been off of the racing circuit for quite a long time. Basically since uh, beginning of September uh, last year. And so now he's trying to race himself back into shape. And there is a sense of, of getting... Uh, um, you know, they're, they're racing savvy and, and being aware of everything around you. Right. And one rider that is very aware is Ryan Dungey oh, right here yeah. because he is flying 209 last time around. And Ryan Villapoto, by the way, is back in seven, not where he wants to be. We're watching Porcel, Reed, Craig, Dungey duking it out for the lead. Stay with us. Congratulations to M&M's Pretzel for being 2011 Product of the Year in the Candy and Snacks category. I think I may regret this. You know, personally, I would have gone with the Dragon, but this is a close second. Fuel TV's live coverage of Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross continues here from Freestone County Raceway, Worthington, Texas. Four riders duking out. The leader just went by. That's Kristen Craig. In the red gear, that's Christoph Porcel, Chad Reed, Ryan Dungey, third and fourth. Pick them. We're not even halfway through, and these guys have already been swapping positions. Co-points leaders here, right? Oh, yeah. Both riders with the red plates. Dungey, obviously, your reigning champion with the big number one, and Chad Reed trying to duplicate his effort in 2009 when he, uh, yeah, he took was, the title. Was, was, yeah. was your champion. Yeah. So it's kind of a showdown here. Your 2010 champ, your 2009 champ. Jeff, check out Dungey the next time he goes over a jump. I thought I saw him wipe his goggle lens with the forearm, and that's never a good sign. That means that your tear-offs and all of the clear uh, laminate, Lexan, uh, really thin... Uh, oh, oh, there's a relief. And this time, oh, still not able to clear that whoop, but fast enough to get by Porcel. No, the Frenchman slams the door back shut. Wow, look at that. Those, those whoops, well, they used to be whoops before the finish. It starts off as whoops, and then they turn into jumps because they <laughs> gradually made them bigger. And there's no skimming across the top. Chad Reed had a couple of hot lines last year through there, but it is... Uh, 
really difficult section because not only do you skim the top, but then when you drop in the bottom, it really G's out the bike and bottoms out the suspension. Unbelievable that the credentials these riders are seeing battling as you also got a glimpse of Weimer and uh, Millsaps. Christian Craig is pulling away from this battle, and there's no doubt that Dungeon Reed are pushing. They're going as fast as they can right now to pass each other, but Christian Craig continues to wheelie away. Here comes Dungeon down to the inside. Reed's got him covered again. Yeah, Christian Craig, last lap around was at 2.12.5. The next fastest time was Han, who sets in ninth. And Porcel was at 2.12.19. Basically, everyone else is 2.13. So you see that the lap times have dropped off already here in this moto as we still have 16 minutes plus two laps. And it's, get, it's getting hot out there, I can tell you that. Don't you get to try again on Reed? And every time he goes to the inside, Reed switches lines and beats him to it. Just go back and explain again the, the possible goggle situation for Dungey, why you would wipe the goggles with your arm. He's run out of tear-offs? goggles? Of, basically run out of tear-offs. I know our hardcore motocross fans know exactly what a tear-off is, but if you're a viewer watching AMA Motocross for the first time, that was a pass for a second. Well, yeah, just like that, they got by Porcel. Now I think I did see Dungey grab a tear-off, so maybe he's okay. Doesn't have time to think about that. He's going after Porcel. You might remember, two years ago, these two duked it out for the 250 class championship. And Dungey goes right by as well. What the heck happened to the 377? Well, you notice Porcel here, he, he's going to have a really bad lap this time around. And, and you can say that right now he's just kind of backed out of it. I, I believe that's a smart ride for him to say, OK, look, my fitness is what it is. I'm coming off of an injury last season, trying to build my foundation. And he's not the type of rider that's going to push himself into the red zone and just blow up and explode. So. It's early in the season. Yes, you don't want to give up these uh, positions in this moto, but you also, I mean, you got what you got, okay? And so you need to ride at your best pace. And I tell you, rider right here, Christian Craig and Lucas Ohanda is riding a spectacular pace at 212. Reed was at 211.5, so he picked up a half a second and Dungey at 212.1. Just past the halfway mark on time in this moto, but then when the 30 minute clock expires, we'll still have two more laps to run. So. Craig's getting experience leading laps. He definitely doesn't have this moto win in the books, though, especially when you have Dungey and Reed breathing down your neck. Yeah, see Porcel coming into this turn here just past the mechanics there. Just really nonchalant, really loose, um, not really with a lot of aggression where he's hammering the throttle in and uh, getting on the brakes here. And then watch Millsaps as he's starting to find some good lines. See how he kept the Yamaha out of that deep berm right there. He came in, he didn't hit the berm early. He came in and rode through the flat spot, hit the berm, came out, got out of the deep stuff. And that's what's allowed uh, Millsap. He's turning at 213 right now, but uh, running in sixth. Weimer jumping to the right, gets to the inside, and Porcel just pretty much gave that line up. Uh, is this a situation you were alluding to? Is Porcel, as he loses another spot to Millsaps, is he now riding? within himself? Well, he's definitely backed off the pace right yeah. now. And it, it, Porcel has always been an uh, interesting individual to me. His... He slowed way down back there, Jeff. Yeah, it, it, maybe there's a bike problem. Yeah. Maybe it's fitness-wise, whatever the case, he's definitely... Yeah, he's not even in the picture right now, so he's lost another spot. Finally, we see Ryan Villapoto. First time in this moto. Bad start, but has not really moved that far forward since then. And he's got Brett Metcalf in tow. There's Metcalf on the yellow bike, the Suzuki, trying to get Porcel. What is happening here with Ryan Villapoto, who just a few weeks ago was crowned the Supercross champ, took down Dungey, took down Reed to do that. And Porcel is off of the racetrack and presumably done with this moto. Wow. So anything he can pick up on the bike? No, but that's uh, disappointing right there for Christoph Porcel, like you said. It doesn't seem like that there's uh, flat tires or anything of the sort. So hopefully our Aaron Bates can get a word. Battle and, for the uh, lead. Chad Reed has just like that gone after Christian Craig and got him. Craig was certainly looking stylish the first 15 minutes of this race. But this is where Reed and Dungey earned their money. It's how they did it at Hangtown last week. It's how they're doing it again here in Texas. Chad Reed has just been spectacular so far and so dominant in Hangtown and Moto2. And I believe Ryan Dungey is seeing the exact same situation here, seeing Chad Reed start to ride away from him. And right. so Dungey's going to have to pick it up. Second's obviously great. He had a qual qualifying practice, but he's going to have to get on it here or he's going to see the 22 disappear. Hey, you're right. He was right there challenging Reed for a little while. Now Reed's squirting back away. Fans are fired up, especially if they're fans of Chad Reed.
Well, it's a glorious day. I don't know about all you, but I've been waiting a long time for this day to happen. And it's finally here. Kawasaki! Live coverage of Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross continues. Round two of the tour from Texas. Same guy that won round one up front here. That's Chad Reed, the veteran out of Australia on the 2-2 Motorsports Bell Ray Racing Machine. Pulling away now, had some serious heat from Ryan Dungey early. Dungey had to fight past Christian Craig to get into the number two spot. And we'll show you how that transpired in just a moment. But is there enough time with 8.48 and two laps left for Dungey to go back after Reed? There's four seconds between them now, Jeff. Well, you need to put in good solid ride, but let's take a look at this pass right here. Craig uh, reaches up, pulls the tear off, wipes his goggles, something, adjusts his helmet there with his left hand. And in the little split second there, Dungey just really took advantage of it, came around the outside into this big single right here. And powered out from there. We'll check it from the front, Jeff. Yeah, and watch when you land right here. Watch how squirrely both bikes get as they're going through those big sand ruts into these sand whips headed to the finish. This is a difficult section of the track. Did you see Dungey's bike swap from the left to the right, bounce back and forth? and? I believe we call that a huckabuck. All right, sport. we got it in. Check. <laughs> I like that. Check. Okay, we got that done. So Dungey is in second. We'll see if he can make up any ground on Reed. Uh, not yet. Reed actually picked up three more tents, built that lead. But Ryan Dungey just turned a 209.9. Reed was a 209.6. Wow. So that's the fastest the lap that Dungey has done. So he's definitely now up to the pace of the leader. But like you said, he's 4.3 seconds behind. Christian Craig, on all the list of how deep this competition was this year and how many riders could win and podium, I don't know if he was on many of those lists, but he's got big names behind him. Villapoto, Weimer, Millsaps, Metcalf, Wyndham, Way, Han, and he's got a nice gap over that group. I can tell you right now, just by you know his body language, is that uh, inside of that gear and inside the helmet, he's really hot right now. <laughs> and this is where you have to have this mental strength along with you know physical uh, fitness, but mentally be able to talk yourself through it, think your way through it, to not make any mistakes and realize that, okay, I'm backing up a little bit, but uh, this is the best motocross race of my career and just to keep it going, keep it on two wheels. Villapoto up to the number four position. Aaron, what are you hearing on the number two? Well, Villapoto's definitely going to be happy about moving up the ladder. It's back to normal training regimen for him this week after being sick since before Vegas. When I was speaking with his trainer, Alden Baker, he had said that they did all of one day of testing this week, but he's still doing a lot of the media cleanup from the Supercross Championship. So he hasn't made his way back to Florida since before Salt Lake City Supercross. So under dry conditions of being sick, trying to get acclimated right now. It's yeah, yeah, big difference obviously between the weather in uh, California and Florida. Villapoto has a house and tracks in both states, but uh, yeah, not able to acclimate himself to the humidity. Hasn't been back in Florida for over a month now. Yeah, Villapoto turning a 2.11.4 lap time. See the bike jumping around a little bit under him. Doesn't look like he's, uh, you know, quite where he wants to be with the setup of the chassis and the suspension. Uh, not quite as comfortable as what it's going to take to get up there and win. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, he is getting better and it is a definite difference in his ride, in his body language from what you've seen last week at Hangtown to this week here. We're watching, uh, sorry about that, Jeff, fifth and sixth battling Weimer and Millsaps. They've been pretty close this entire race. Millsaps, oh, he closed up a ton in that whoop section. He wants a 32. Millsaps on the uh, Muscle Milk Toyota Joe Gibbs racing machine. And he's Monster doing some work. Yeah, he's pretty, he is doing he work, some Muscle Milk. There he is, he is on the back here of Weimer, and Weimer's a rider also that's trying to build his fitness and his foundation, but look at this around the Whoa. outside, Davey Millsaps just really swooping the uh, 32, and you notice Weimer there, he's another one of those riders, you can just tell by the body language, and once that, once he sensed that Millsaps was on the outside, he didn't put up much of a fight. Yeah, Millsaps, where did he find that speed? In the course of about a quarter of a lap, he closed the gap, passed him and is now leaving him. Millsaps has come a long way over the uh, last couple of weeks. Uh, end of the Supercross series strong and starting this motocross series well. Now we got a little gap back to the next group. That should be Tommy Hahn and we believe Kevin Windham, who we've not seen yet uh, in this moto. Oh, how deep was that soil there? Hahn stuffed for the front wheel in. Windham and Metcalf duking it out. And Metcalf was passed by Windham. It's going to try to repass him. I, I get a sense here that this this moto, these riders are really trying to get a gauge of where their fitness is, and this is the first really hot race of the year. Okay, and so, oh, here comes a Ricky, Ricky Dietrich. Dietrich. 
539. Makes a pass. Wow. Wyndham's got a little problem with the bike oh. there. Oh, is he slowing the pace? A little bit of smoke coming out. Possibly an overheating condition. Yeah. Not Something sure if that's it. steam or smoke. It almost looked more like smoke than steam. You know, steam would be, the engine was overheating and uh, it had the uh, coolant starting to spit out the overflow tubes. But also there's overflow tubes for the uh, lower end where all the, the engine oil is. And uh, that could possibly what we're seeing. But Kevin Windham here uh, on the factory Honda is definitely backed off the pace. Uh, and he was up to eighth in that motor. So uh, he's slowing down big time. Is it possible the steam is because one of the nozzles on the uh, coolant flow is, you know, hits the hot engine, hits the hot pipe? Oh, he stopped right in front of uh, Dan Bentley there for American yeah. Honda Racing. Notice when he revved up the engine, it really started to accelerate uh, the... Wow. Yeah, the coolant coming out. Yeah, so, so we've lost Porcel and Wyndham for, from this one. That's a bummer. They had a, a minor mechanical issue last week at Hangtown. Nothing uh, this dramatic. But that's what happens. What well, we've heard these teams saying, hard to test at this level to get the engines this hot, to put this kind of strain on them. The intensity of racing, the heat of today. You there, can do a lot of motos, you know, during the week, but it's just hard to replicate this. There just is nothing like the race conditions. Right. And uh, especially this isn't the type of condition that you normally, that you actually want to go through, but it's the necessary <laughs> evil of this sport is to get out there and hammer out laps in and, and the heat and humidity and uh, be prepared for an extreme racing condition like we have here in Wortham, Texas. That's where you pay a rider to go out there and just hammer a good hour-long moto for you. That's what I would do. Just let somebody else do that kind of dirty work. All right, Ryan Villapoto, by the way, has moved into the number three spot. Craig still looks good. We'll be right back. Fuel TV has new shows all week long. Thursday, gear up for the AMA Motocross Highlight Show. Chad Reed continuing to pull away here in the first moto of racing on a Memorial Day weekend in Texas. Fuel TV giving you live coverage of AMA Motocross Racing, and Chad Reed looked over his shoulder, I think trying to see where the competition was, but they're gone. Two laps to go, he's gone. Yeah, and, and he his lap times have been fantastic. He turned to 208 just a couple of laps ago, and I keep going back last season when he rode Monster Energy Kawasaki. Um, he had this, uh, this dream ride at that team, he said he didn't feel right. He's, he's like, I I'm just don't feel that my fitness is good. I'm not healthy for some reason. I don't know what it is. A lot of people doubted it, thinking that it was excuses because he came out and won the opening round in 2010. He looked great. Yeah. But as the season went on and it got hotter, it seemed like fatigue set in and he could not recover. He got together with his doctors, figured it out that he had a uh, some type of Epstein bar. Here's what you have to do to naturally cure yourself. I mean, he's got a you know an assortment of pills that he takes on like an hourly or daily basis. And Chad Reed knew his body, so he took time off, backed out of this uh, out of this series, backed out of his uh, contract with that team, and at the end of last season had no ride and decided yep. to do this thing all on his own. And I am so proud of what he's accomplishing. Um, because it all comes down to his attitude and wanting to be here and wanting to be champion and not not racing or training because you have to because it's your job but because it's your passion it's your love that's what i see with chad Reed. you just don't ride like this without having the passion and just really wanting to be here it's fantastic he has been fast fluid fit all the way through this is how you ride a motorcycle Check back here with Andrew Short. He gave us the keys to the race on him earlier. Now, unfortunately, he is mired in the 16th position on the Red Bull KTM. Just talk about what he needs to do today. Well, my keys here for uh, the second moto for Andrew Short is, is going to be to get a better start because, obviously, he just did not put the KTM in the right spot, and he's been battling through the pack uh, all moto long. Aaron, what are you hearing on the number 29? Well, guys, just to elaborate a little bit more on his son's condition, who's just roughly six months old, Hudson is, they diagnosed a cataract in one of his eyes, which is something that you rarely ever find in a baby. So he's going to go in and have a surgery done in a week and a half from now. He said right now everything's just sort of up in limbo, but you could only imagine as a parent how hard that would be to put that in the side of your mind and go out there and race. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, Hudson is staying back with uh, the grandparents this weekend. So, uh, the rest of the short family can try to focus on racing. He just moved past Ben LeMay to get in the number 15 spot. And that's not where Andrew Short wants to be. Uh, he's a top five, top three yeah. rider here, especially at his, you know, at his home track. Uh, but up front, once again, the 2-2. And you notice how with this track, everybody's kind of funneled into 
the main line. They said that the track was really deep, really soft. And so now as the track started to dry out in spots, they're trying to find areas of the track where the sand and the soil is not so deep, where you can really get the RPMs up on the bike, and the bike's going to pull. And what we talk about when we pull, basically when you're driving your car or your truck, if you live here in Texas, <laughs> and you put your right foot down on the accelerator and the car just starts to set you back in the seat, that's the pull that we're talking about. And when you've got the bike with the horsepower, you go, man, this baby really pulls. Right now, Chad Reed's pulling a, a lead because he's 7.9 <laughs> seconds out on second place. Unbelievable. We're on the last lap here of Moto1, and if you see the lead that Reed has right now, you think there wasn't any competition in this moto. There is Dungey, but at one point, about 10 minutes into this race, Dungey was all over Reed, and it almost looked like he was being held up, but Reed weathered that storm, found his groove, yep, but extended it again. As we're looking back here for third, we're looking for Villa Poto. When you're talking about Dungey being in second, the 96 championship, I, I got a lot of second places to McGrath earlier in the championship. So we'll talk about it over and over as we move through this series that uh, seconds, thirds, not bad here at the beginning of, of the series. Yeah, well, Villapoto's got to find some way to make himself happy with it. 33 second gap to himself and the leaders. That's not where he wants to be, but those points that he's scoring early in the year could loom large. We've seen it happen so many times in this tour. A rider catches fire in the second half of the year, and that's really where the championship damage is done. But Reed will take maximum points if they can get him early in the hey, season, too. You take him if you can get him. <laughs> Once again, Chad Reed's looking back, trying to see where Ryan Dungey is. Nice, comfortable win here. Just a few turns to, and a bunch of bumps here to go. Wow. Well, Chad Reed's on quite a streak. Won the final Supercross of the year in Las Vegas. Won the first motocross of the year in Hangtown. Wins the first motor today here in Texas. Nice run for Reed, and uh, I would assume able to save a little bit of energy in those last two laps. With that lead he had over Dungey, looking back, cruising. There's Dungey in the number two spot. And Villapoto still working his way in. Final margin of victory, 7.8 seconds. Now, maybe Reed will argue and say he should be the only one with the red plate, because technically he has broken the tie in points <laughs> midway through our race day today yeah. by outscoring Dungey in Moto1. Yeah, this is, this is a really good ride here for Villapoto also. Uh, he had to come from a long ways back, and this is a difficult track, as you can see. Take out a lot of roost. Takes third. And yeah, that looked uh, precarious for a while. And we'll see what the rest of the top five is as they roll through the line. Chad Reed is already getting ready to talk to us on the podium. Well done for the man from Australia. Got the, got the victory yeah. poodle in the background there. <laughs> That's trophy. There's a Dave Osterman, the team manager behind him, his mechanic Lars on the right. And uh, Reed says, just hanging out with these guys, it's such an enjoyable experience, kind of like going to the track with your buddies, like old school. That's why he wants to be here this year, and when you want to be here, you tend to do well. We'll be right back. At TireRack.com, we stock an incredible number of tires, nearly one million tires. But we don't just stock them, we test them. And we post user reviews so you can find which tires are the best for you and your Listen up, action sports fans. It's the world's greatest skateboard event, and it's coming to you from the Big Apple. Watch the Maloof Money Cup presented by Vans live from New York City, Saturday, June 4th and Sunday, June 5th, 4 p.m. Eastern, only on Fuel TV. Check out how this race broke down. Chad Reed able to get the moto win, but the star of the show early, Christian Craig, Jeff Emig. Yeah, what a ride uh, for the young man from Southern California. And look, fast and fluid. And behind him, there was a real battle raging between uh, Christoph Purcell and Chad Reed. Yeah, Ryan Dungey getting the mix there in fourth. Purcell had moved past Reed to get second, then went backwards. Reed Dungey get by him, then Reed continuing. His torrid charge that we saw last week in California, all the way to the lead, passes Craig for the number one spot. Dungey followed Reed through, but was not able to go any further than this. Yes, he gets the number two spot over Craig here, but would not be able to challenge Reed. So the 22 wins moto number one. He is feeling it right now. Feeling heat also, I guess, a little bit, but you know. Yeah, I guess the way to stay cool is to go as fast as you possibly can to get a lot of wind. There, there, you, go. there you go. There That's you go. a nice theory. <laughs> Let's give you the results here from the first moto. Uh, we saw Dungey Villapoto second and third. Millsaps, nice ride for fourth. And Christian Craig holds on for a top five. Excellent. Weimer, Hahn, Dietrich round out the uh, top 20. Uh, Smith holds on for 11. Seth Rarick, uh, 20th. That's, on the, uh, that's out of the border team. Bunch of privateers in there doing well. Go into the top 30. And we'll give you the entire group here in just a moment 
as we wait for our leaders and winners to chat down to the podium. There is your top 40. Kyle Chisholm did crash out of that one early, 39th, and Porcel, 34th, was running as high as second, did pull out of the moto, not sure why. Let's go down to Aaron on the box. Aaron? A convincing Moto1 win for Chad Reed. Chad, you won that by over 7.8 seconds. Did you manage to conserve some energy, and is that going to help you heading into Moto2? Uh, towards the end there, I tried to just back it down a little bit, check out some lines for the second Moto. Uh, man, I used a lot of energy at the beginning there, trying to get around Purcell. It's just one dominant line that's really fast, and that's typical here in, in out of the trees. So, uh, start's so important. You know, I think uh, everyone was banging, you know. Like, I was lucky that I didn't go down that first lap, so... Uh, just try to do that, uh, you know, get a whole shot and just get out front, get some clean air and try to do that again. We noticed that you made a plate switch last second right, right after practice for the red plate. Why the decision to change? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, last weekend I got the first place trophy, so I think I should have the red plate. And uh, that's my opinion. And, you know, I stuck to it during practice. But, you know, I'm a team owner. I can't let my pride get in the way. So, you know, we'll put that on there for the sponsors. They like that. So, you know, huge, huge thanks to all the guys at Tutu Motorsports, Bellray, all the guys at American Honda, Pro Circuit, Dunlop. Shift Fox, try to do it again. Congratulations on Moto1 victory. All right, Chad Reed has got Moto1 locked in. We've got uh, more chatting and a 250 Moto coming up next, so stay with us from Texas. Oh, what a night. Twix pause in progress. Let's do it. Yeah, we can mm, cookie caramel chocolate. Twix. Pause like you mean it. The Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship has begun. Make some noise, you're getting ready to go racing. Relive every crash and turn and get the story behind the story as only Fuel TV can bring it. He's going to the front of the pack. Watch Fuel TV's AMA Motocross highlights Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. They come from small towns and all walks of life. For some, it's a shot at glory. For others, it's going to be a long night. Everyday guys out to prove who's king of their ring. Hometown Throwdown, part of Fuel TV's Friday Fight Night at 10 p.m., only on Fuel TV. It's back. The Maloof Money Cup. The world's greatest skateboarding event ever invades New York. Fuel TV brings it to you live. Expect the unexpected. Oh my God, he just destroyed it. Oscar coming in hot. We are live here to see a Fuel TV. The world's most innovative skaters battle for their share of $2 million in prize money. The 2011 Maloof Money Cup, live from New York, June 4th and 5th, only on Fuel TV. Welcome back. We've just completed our first 450 race from Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship Racing in Texas. Let's send it down to the podium with Aaron Bates and our runner-up. This is where the season kind of turned around for Ryan Dungey last year when you won your first outdoor victory. Ryan, coming back to Texas, you guys are used to the heat and the humidity, but there's another element out here today, the wind. How bad is it and how does it affect you guys when you're riding? You know, it's pretty tough. You know, I mean, when you're going off of a, in the right direction, when you're heading straight into it, you kind of get... It cut your helmet catches, but you know it's what it is. You got everybody's got to go through it. But uh, if anything, it helps. You know, just to kind of cool the sweat off. But uh, it is hot. It is humid. Didn't get off to the best to start that moto, but uh, we'll keep working hard. We'll go back and recover and uh, get ready for round two. And uh, I'm excited. Best of luck. There's Dungey making the move for second around Christian Craig. Watch this kick he gets here. Yeah, it gets a twisted up right there. That's for sure. 
Who doesn't like celebrities, comedy, and music? The Daily Habit is your destination for the hottest stars, athletes, comics, and cutting-edge musical acts on TV. Watch it weeknights, 11 p.m. Eastern and Pacific only on Fuel TV. Let's go back to Aaron with our third-place finisher. Ryan Villapoto shows up feeling a little bit better this week. Ryan, back to your old training regimen as before. How much has that helped you, and how is that going to affect your ride today? I mean, a lot. I got to do some testing. got to do some riding during the week. So, uh, you know, things are looking good. Just a little bit of a bad start, and then, uh, you know, I fell over. So, you know, we'll come back second moto, just go back and uh, get refreshed up and uh, come back out strong. Best of luck in Moto2. Congratulations. Check out the schedule of events coming up in this Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Tour. We'll have, of course, our Thursday night highlight show showing the highlights of this race every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on Fuel TV. And then we'll go live at our next round, High Point from Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, 1 p.m. Eastern on June 11th. We'll have the highlights from that Thursday night at 10, June 16th. And then our next race, Bud's Creek in Maryland. That'll be 1 p.m. Eastern time again. Every 450 and 250 first moto this year will be shown live on Fuel TV. So good to have the network on board with Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross. Reign supreme at round one. A long, hot summer of racing has only just begun. The world's fastest motocross riders head to Texas for round two as the 40th anniversary season of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship rolls on. We're in Wortham, Texas for round two of the 2011 Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship, the Rockstar Energy Drink Freestone National. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a great Memorial Day weekend motocross celebration. Jason Wygant joined, of course, by four-time AMA National Champion Jeff Emig, and we're excited to bring you coverage of the 450 class of Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship Racing. Here are the big picture storylines we're watching here today in Texas. Chad Reed goes out and dominates our opener one week ago from Northern California in Hangtown. He goes 2-1 to win the overall. So good news for the Honda camp there. Bad news for the KTM division, though. Mike Alessi goes down in practice didn't race last weekend, will not race this weekend. Scratch him from the championship contention. And today, one of the qualifiers that you got to watch, putting in fast laps, Ryan Dungey on the rock star, Makita Suzuki, your fastest rider this morning. So we turn it over to you, Jeff Emig. Ryan Dungey looks fast. Chad Reed coming in here with momentum. A great weekend to watch some great motocross racers. Yeah, it is. And I'm telling you, Memorial Day marks the start of summer. We're here in the middle of Texas. The temperatures are skyrocketing, but the fans have really came out in droves. There's a great support here. Uh, the track's interesting. It's going to be really tough on the riders. It's going to get rough. It's, it's, you know, it's going to be hot. And uh, overall, it's just going to be an exciting uh, day of racing. I'm looking forward to it. We'll give you the idea of how we run this series. Motocross 411, we will run two motos. We've already completed the first one. We'll show you the finale right now. 40 riders in each moto, and they are all 30 minutes and two laps in duration. You combine the scores from both to determine an overall winner for the day, and in case we have a tie from the two races, the tiebreaker is the better score in the second moto. So that's how we race motocross. We'll show you the track here at Freestone, Texas. Jeff Emick, take us on a little ride. Well, we have a difficult track. I mean, it's windy, hot dry, all that other stuff, but the track is really wet and moist, and they bring in some sand and put on top of what is actually is a pretty good soil underneath, pretty good hard base. Riders seem to like it, but it's made the track extremely rough. Uh, it's challenging, and a lot of the middle part of the track is wet, and the edges are dry, and so the riders are really fighting for the edges where it's not so deep, and it really pulls the horsepower out of the engine. See that the highlighted section of the track. We'll take you through it here, Jeff, on the GoPro lap. Yeah, this is kind of uh, what I was talking about. Look at some of these uh, sections in the middle of the track where it's really wet and rutted. And then you get uh, kind of to the outside. Uh, you know, it's a little bit drier, a little bit easier. But this is earlier today. Uh, Kyle Chisholm on the uh, Moto Concepts Yamaha. This is the section just before the finish. There's this steep single jump into these sand whoops. And then they made these last four actually jumps uh, as you come into the finish line. Overall, extremely challenging track. Uh, it's hot, it's windy, and uh, the riders are really fearful of uh, you know, this hot weather. Man, that looks like fun. All right, let's show you the highlights from moto number one. Off the start line, Villapoto buried his teammate Jake Weimer up front. Bunch of other riders down. 
Things would get uh, pretty crazy early because of surprise. Christian Craig out front of the Lucas Oil Troy Lee Honda on fire. Yeah, and he was on fire. He was really loose. He was really fast. But behind him, at the beginning of the moto, was Christoph Forcell on the Moto Concepts Yamaha that came alive, made some passes, and then uh, things started to unravel. And yeah. uh, he started dropping quickly. Yeah, he got around Reed. Then Reed gets him back. Now Dungey's going to get by. And Porcel would eventually pull off the track after losing this spot to Dungey. The word is not comfortable with the bike set up, but he has revised it for Moto2. A little more on that later. There's Porcel pulling off. Disappointment for the Frenchman, who definitely showed some speed. Now Reed, clear of Dungey, clear of Porcel, goes after your leader. And Craig did his best to try to fight Reed off. Reed would get him. Bad luck for Kevin Windham, who had just broken into the top 10, runs into mechanical trouble, so the Honda man is out. Filippoto was way back early, as we mentioned off the start, would fight his way through to a podium spot and outduel Craig and Millsaps down to the end to get third. Dungey second. Chad Reed takes another win. This guy is feeling the flow right now and feeling the heat, but also feeling the cheers of the fans. Let's send it down to Aaron Bates with our progressive free race report. Aaron? Kevin Windham's been calling himself a high-tech redneck ever since he's posted a tweet saying he's been getting his family ready for a motocross holiday this weekend. He said he feels a little bit like the Clampets. He's got all his family, all of his friends. But you guys, Kevin Windham, he had a whole engine replacement after that first moto. A tough deal. They don't know what the problem is. They're going to take the engine back to the shop and diagnose it. Yeah, there, there's Windham's tweet. They got it all. They got his cure guy. Glad they got the goldfish here. Most importantly. Hey, the goldfish in water out here in Texas probably got the best setup of all. It is hot out here today. And we're going to get it going here. Moto number two on speed of the 450 class. Can be a yellow one there, Wagant. Yeah, that's Brett Metcalf on the 24. Uh, a couple riders tangled up on the outside of turn one. Meddy's going to lead him around the rock star, Makita Suzuki, and his teammate Ryan Dungey with him. And Dungey carries the momentum and takes the lead. Chad Reed right there in third. Jake Weimer not too far back in fourth, but right now, Jeff, Ryan Dungey leading him around. And as they start to sort out here and establish the positions, looks like Weimer in fourth and possibly Ricky Dietrich. Yeah, I think on, you're right. uh, in, in fifth on the Yamaha. So. Look at Reed and Metcalf, pair of Australians battling for second. Reed on the 22, able to secure that spot. Metcalf right behind him. And Dietrich gonna try to run with Metcalf here. You see Dietrich on the left side of your screen, the blue Yamaha converted over, was an off-road racer, did some enduro cross and all that to take technical riding. Now a motocrosser and doing a good job. Well, clearly you can see that there's two riders so far this summer that are totally dialed in and ready to go racing each time the gate drops. Talking about Ryan Dungey, your leader, and Chad Reed right here. These guys already have uh, three or four bike links over Metcalf. Man, they're going to be hard to beat this summer if they keep starting and everything like this. Well, it was like this in Moto2 last week from Hangtown. The difference is, where is Ryan Villapoto? Another bad start for the number two. He was battling with those guys a week ago, but he can't battle with them today if he's starting as far back as he is. Still Dungey Reed, Metcalf, Dietrich, and I think we're seeing Davey Millsaps now uh, showing his face. There's the number 18 in the hunt as well. He has gotten around Weimer. How about Ricky Dietrich? We talked to him right before this photo. We said, hey, good job, top 10. He's like, nah, I'm not happy until I'm in the top five, and that's where he is right now. Well, here comes uh, Kevin Windham. Yep. He's going to jump in there probably about fifth or sixth. Uh, so good start after not finishing that first moto. We'll see if, if the advantage of not having to ride in the heat and be dehydrated and uh, fatigued, if he can use that to his advantage, or if not finishing that first moto just gets him off of his rhythm and, uh, you know, he kind of doesn't have the flow of the track. We'll see. But Kevin Windham, certainly one of the most exciting uh, veterans out there. And uh, right now he's he's putting the hammer down. Looks like well, he better. there's Villapoto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got it with the hammer down. He's got Ryan Villapoto right behind him. And it's Michael Byrne on the uh, Butler Brothers Suzuki. Here is Villapoto going after Wyndham. Wyndham 14 and Villapoto number two. Well, and notice, uh, well, this is Villapoto. See if he gets up the inside, just over the yellow markers, oh. finds the hot line, he takes the spot the from Wyndham. But you can already see here in Moto2 that there's, there's still some wet soft spots, but the riders are able to use more of the track uh, because it's dried out some. And so in those spots that were really wet and deep that they tried to stay away from because it would bog the bikes down, 
Um, now you can really use the full track, and Villapoto just may need it as he comes through the pack. Aaron, what have you got going in the pits? Talk about frustration for Tommy Hahn. Being from Texas, Tommy, here, Moto2, you find yourself in the pits. What exactly went on? I got something. My, my gas tank broke. We just got these aluminum tanks made. Something broke. Uh, the, t the cap was tight. It was splashing gas everywhere. And uh, I stink right now, so kind of sucks. But uh, you know, I had a good start to the year. Eight, eight, seven, the first three motos. Come back, uh, take the weekend off, and use it to our advantage, and uh, ride as hard as I can, and come back next race. Tough luck for Tommy Hahn today. Wow, what a bummer. Tommy Absolutely. had it going, had some solid top tens, building a foundation for success this summer, getting the mojo working and all that stuff, and then at his home race, yep. has a mechanical. And that's part of it, but uh, really disappointing for uh, Tommy Hunt. Man, we've seen a lot of those this year, a lot of bad luck for these guys. A lot of mechanical troubles early in the season. They're all trying new parts as we transition over to this motocross tour, round number two. You're watching Weimer, who you did see get passed by his teammate Villapoto. Villapoto going after Millsaps, Wyndham going after Weimer. We got battles all over this racetrack, but it's all behind Ryan Dudgee and Chad Reed, who are leading it. MCD.com, your one-stop shop for parts, apparel, and accessories. Rocky Mount at MCD.com. Get ready. Ryan Dungey leading the way, but very early here in the heat of Texas. It's the Rockstar Energy Drink Freestone National. Round two of Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship Racing. And the two contenders are right up front early. Dungey on the number one, Chad Reed in the 22. We're just getting started. Well, we'll see if uh, Dungey, maybe in that second in the first moto, conserved any injury, any energy. Uh, we'll okay. also see if he made some changes to the bike that are going to help him here. And we'll see just how he can respond. Chad Reed has been really determined. And let's not forget last week at Hangtown, Chad Reed, the second moto, just dominated it. Yeah. And uh, Dunn's just got to be feeling that one. So he's out for a little bit of redemption here, this moto. Looking at Millsaps here on the Muscle Milk Toyota Yamaha in uh, fourth. And then there is Villapoto, who's been making a bunch of moves. Take us to this Villapoto. Yeah, watch this here for uh, Ryan Villapoto. Watch as he tries to go wide and gets a little much, too much weight on the front end of the, of the Kawasaki and almost buried it. You know, it's, uh, it's like if you're uh, water skiing and you kind of sink the tip, you know, it kind of had that same feeling to the bike. Unbelievable what these guys have to deal with, especially early in the races. They're trying to make passes. Don't know where the good lines are. So Villapoto is uh, fifth, like we mentioned, behind Millsaps and Metcalf for a fourth and third. Behind him is Dietrich, sixth. Wyndham, Weimer, Craig, and Andrew Short right up the top 10. Earlier, we were taking a look at Gallo and Winterstrom, uh, which were running 31st, 22nd. Now we're coming back to uh, Brett Metcalf, Metcalf here, yep. who got the start. Pretty, pretty solid ride. Once again, you know, he's coming off of those injuries, but uh, fitness, he seems to be ready for the task. Maybe not quite running the speed of the leaders, but a strong ride right now. Mention that uh, hose you see popped out of the back of this jersey there, Jeff. What, what do we got going there? A few of the riders have chose to wear, uh, you know, some sort of uh, like a camelback system where they can have some cold water or something, you know, uh, to kind of wet their whistle and sip on during the moto, uh, kind of keep their hydration. But at this point, you're in a second moto. You, you really, you know, lay it all on the line. I wasn't uh, a big fan of that. I tried that a couple times during uh, practicing, but, uh, but it, you know, it never raced with it. Oh, Millsaps coming after Metcalf and getting it. So Davey Millsaps moving into a podium position early. He is now third. That'll drop Metcalf back to fourth. And it has been a renaissance for Davey Millsaps over the last month. Now, Millsaps started the year strong last year and then crashed at our race in Maryland and basically lost a kidney. And he recovered from that injury, but uh, it has really affected his training program. Aaron, what do you know there on the number 18? Well, guys, apparently he had just a phenomenal week this week. He had two days of riding back in California. They ended up testing the shock on Wednesday and then a new pipe on Thursday. So a lot of time on the bike. He says he feels extremely loose coming into this track, and it's one of those tracks where you need to ride loose to conserve a little bit of energy. Yeah, Millsaps has a totally revamped training program. I found out he, because of the, the kidney problem, he was training hard. He was still tired. Wait a minute. Chad Reed has lost a bunch of ground. Uh, he had just turned in the fast flap of this moto and we thought he was closing on Dungey, but now we find out he has lost whatever he has made up. So a mistake from the 22, and there you see. No yeah. Ryan Dungey in sight. Well, let's see uh, how he rebounds here and see if he feels any sense of urgency or if he says, okay, second's fine. This is a long summer, 24 motos in total. So you think about it, 24 main events. What could happen here if he 
stayed in second and Dungey stayed up. He uh, lose, lose the overall. Now here's oh. Reed. This is coming into a turn. This is, uh, I believe, off of that uh, step down tabletop. In that situation, just knowing where he went down, if he landed off the tabletop a little wrong, hit one of those soft sections, hit a kicker and went down, see like a like in a similar section there. And Millsaps is on the move right now. So is Filippoto, so is Metcalf. So Reed's got to be able to regroup or he might lose more positions. Look at Filippoto on the Kawasaki, taking a long way around that section. Now tucking in behind Metcalf. Just taking a mouthful of Texas dirt right now too when you're trying to battle you see some of these sections have kind of you know funneled into uh, where there's one fast line and then they'll the track will open up in a certain spot so you really have to time your passes and and if you got to eat dirt for a while you got to to get yourself to that passing point because you want to be right on the rider's rear tire if you're trying to make a move and uh, this time around Metcalf turns a 212 Villapoto a 211 so Villapoto just a little bit quicker Nice move by Villapoto on the inside, doing exactly what you're saying. He's getting right there in the roost zone, right behind Metcalf. And to put it into perspective, Dundry turned a 208, fastest of the moto. Reed was a 217, so they were pretty close. So that, you know, close to a, a nine second fall there. And which nine seconds doesn't seem like a lot when you hit the ground, but hey, this is uh, it's what these guys do for their profession, right? They have a passion for this and uh, just incredible ability to remount. Uh, even after a hard fall. This this is the corner here where Reed went down. Yeah, these guys are battling for tenths of a second, so you lose nine seconds in a lap of the crash. Big difference. Wyndham making the move on Dietrich, so much better performance from Wyndham that got the bike figured out, and he is now up to the number six spot. Dietrich says he wants top fives. He is close. But hey, when you got guys like Wyndham and Villapoto coming up from behind, not easy to hold those guys off. There is Wyndham, and he's got a lot of fans out here. Makes his uh, home in uh, Mississippi. So uh, the Texas races are generally considered his home track races, and you can hear the fans cheering him. Uh, Wyndham's always a crowd favorite, so. The great race in Alaska, they'd be pumped. Yeah, you look back here to uh, Weimer, who had that great start, kind of fading off the pace a little bit, and then the 144 of Christian Craig, and, and uh, what a great day overall that he's had uh, overall, so. Keys to, the, to, to, keys to the race for Christian Craig. Don't wilt. Right now, he's. Uh, you can see that he's putting in a pretty strong ride. So don't make any mistakes. You know, keep it in and then believe that you can run with these guys also, which he's already proved that he can. Aaron, what do you have on the 144? Right as he was lined up at the start gate, he said, I asked him where that performance came from, and he had said to me he'd been working with Ryan Hughes over the past couple of weeks, and he said it's definitely all paid off. He's not acclimated to this condition whatsoever, but he said he's definitely adapting fast. He's very proud of himself for Moto1. Well, and this guy looks great on the bike, I'll tell you that. Yeah, Rhino's got to be proud. We'll stay with this battle when we return. Can Reed run Brenton Dungey back down? This. Car Warriors at eight, a serious injury may cost the challengers to throw in the towel early. Then at nine, a conflict between Itchy and Rhino may cost the All-Stars the build. Back to Car Warriors Wednesday night, beginning at 8 Eastern on speed. Back to back shows there. Back to back Moto2 showdowns for Ryan Dungey and Chad Reed. These guys battled a week ago at Hangtown, and it's on again here today in Texas. Mistake for Reed, he's trying to run Dungey back down. Two laps ago, Dungey was at a 208 and Reed turned to 206. I mean, Reed stepped it up to the next level. This last lap come through, Dungey was the 206 and Reed the 208. So now Dungey totally has responded. And as he starts to get into lap traffic, he's feeling the effects of all of his hard work paying off right now. It, it, it seems like he's starting to arrive with a little more sense of urgency. Trying to nail this overall, tie it up in points, then that is considering that they go one and or he, he gets a first and Reed ends up second. Oh, look at the traffic these riders have to deal with. This course is getting more and more difficult as we show you the gap between Dungey and Reed. There it is. Reed comes through. It's actually full 11 seconds now, like you said. The time Reed had made up on the previous lap, Dungey got right back. So that's first and second. Then we'll drop back and show you uh, Davey Millsaps the number 18. What I was saying earlier, uh, Millsaps had to redesign his training program uh, due to the uh, kidney problem he had last year, which he incurred in a crash. Found out he was anemic. The more he trained, the more tired he actually got instead of getting stronger. Said now uh, he's got to eat a lot more steak, got to eat more red meat. So he's in Texas. 
No well, kidding. He's feeling strong. A lot of stake out here, you know? Yeah, and he's going to have to be really cover, you, you, you know, how he handles his uh, fitness, you know, and all that stuff. So uh, definitely showing. I mean, something has clicked. Millsaps yeah. is on it, as is the number two of Ryan Villapoto. He's starting to come alive here. Uh, how long, Jeff, can Villapoto have finishes like this and not be frustrated? First of all, we'll show you how he made up the uh, time and now a position on uh, Metcalf. Take us through this, Jeff. Well, this is that single just before the finish, and Villapoto just charges into it a little bit harder, a little, little more sense of urgency. And uh, that main line on the rider's left where uh, Metcalf was uh, had, a, had a few more kickers coming into that. So uh, Villapoto choosing good lines and uh, taking advantage of that. Okay, so solid points and all that for Villapoto. And you mentioned, though, that these guys really aren't happy unless they're on the top step of the box winning races. How long can Villapoto be mired like this, taking third, fourth, whatever, while Reed and Dungey are gone before he starts getting frustrated? You, you have to get it together by midway point. We get to Red okay. Bud. Okay. That seems to mark the uh, you know the late season push and so um, if you can make it to Red Bud even if you're a few points down if you can start winning by then uh, then you can you know tear it up at the end of uh, end of the season but uh, right now it's not bad well you see the gap that they would make up on him today we're looking at you know somewhere around 10 points depending on how this finishes up that they might gain on uh, Villapoto the reason we show you this is because the overall score the winner of the race today will be who does the best in two motos. And there would be a tie between Reed and Dungey, but the tiebreaker is the better finish in Moto 2. So they're collecting series championship points in every moto, but they're fighting also for the overall for the weekend. These guys were tied. We're talking about the Reed and Dungey coming into the race on points, and they might be tied by the time the day is over. That is close competition. Villapoto hopes to be a factor before this one is over. He needs to go after Millsap first. He's closing the gap. Celebrating the 40th anniversary of Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship Racing. We'll give you some of the highlights of history. The 1981 Massacre at Saddleback. A recovering and weaker hurricane roared back to full strength in 1981 at Saddleback, if only to prove a point. Well, if Howerton would have left me alone and not pissed me off, he'd have won that day. I've been off for a year. No way to beat him. He starts screwing with me. You know, banging in, passing me in chicken spots. I don't know if I get flipped him off, he flipped me off, whatever. It got ugly, and finally I had enough of it. So I said, okay, that's the end of this. We go over a double jump, he gets seven in the corner. I T-boned this sorry bastard, hard as I could. He wobbles, doesn't go down. I set up and bang him again. Totally intentionally, I, I admit it. I, want, I will break his leg, I'm sick of him now. Finally falls off, tries to grab me on the way down. I just go whoop really affected me because I couldn't even concentrate on the race. I let him back by. Can't, I, I, I don't even want to race with him anymore. I'm sick of him. The hardest 45 minute race of my life was the next moto. I beat him fair and square on a tub of 30 pounds heavier than what he was riding. Okay, folks, if you're new to the sport, Bob Hurricane Hanna was maybe the original motocross superstar, and it was brass riding and talking like that that made him yeah. the legend that he is. Sometimes you, you <laughs> wish that he just wouldn't hold back, and he'd really tell it like it is. Yes, he's very PC. <laughs> uh, here is Andrew Short, uh, one of the home state favorites, makes his uh, racing home here in Texas. Tough day for Shorty today. Yeah, Shorty actually in that first moto, uh, the reason he was so far back, uh, is, is he actually went down, uh, bumped his head a little bit, said he was a little bit silly, uh, but he kept pushing through the pack and, um, you know, ended up 15. So uh, it's going to be a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, right now, he's got a decent ride inside the top 10, running ninth, but uh, days like this just never seem to end. These seem like the longest motos of your career. Here he is going for the number seven spot, battling with Weimer. Yeah, watch right here, Weimer who was uh, up front, starting to lose a little bit of time, watch short with a little local knowledge, says, you know what, I'm gonna take the <laughs> short line and uh, take uh, seventh place. And pulling away a bit, as you can see now from Weimer. 
Dungy continues to lead over Reed and Millsaps. And Millsaps holding his own against Ryan Villapoto, who's fourth. Metcalf fifth, Ricky Dietrich sixth. This man, Andrew Short, seventh. Then it is Weimer in eighth, Wyndham and Christian Craig right out the top ten. Well, now for KTM, they chose to ride this 350 four-stroke new bike. And it's at this point, late in the second moto, six minutes plus two laps left, is where they think that that machine in the future will really benefit the riders. Christian Craig keeping the heat on Kevin Wyndham. We saw Craig between motos, said he didn't feel that bad. And he obviously is feeling pretty darn good because he goes around Wyndham. What'd you say about don't wilt? Don't well, well, he's keeping it together. Look yeah. how fluid. I, I mean, he really has a cool style and a cool technique. And, uh, like I said, we spoke to him. I said, hey, are you fatigued? You know, are you going to recover? He says, yeah. He goes, I was pretty tired after first moto, uh, but uh, but I feel good and I'm ready for the second moto. And uh, so far, so good. And I tell you, he rides really, you know, efficient and loose on the bike. It's when you ride tight and you're holding on and you're tensed up everywhere. That's when it just seems to zap the energy out of your body. And you just cannot train hard enough to ever be in shape if you don't ride fluid and smooth. Just saw Ty Simmons, a young Australian, go by in 11th and 12th here is Les Smith, the replacement rider for Justin Brayton on the Muscle Milk Toyota uh, Joe Gibbs Racing Machine. Basically got the call on Monday night, so not much time to test. There he is on the right side of the Yamaha. Right behind him is Michael Byrne. So Les Smith getting an opportunity here with a great team. Going after the JDR J-Star KTM man, the 18-year-old Australian. That is Ty Simmons, battle just outside the top 10. And, and I tell you, I've been watching Les Smith all day long, qualifying practice. He looks really comfortable right away on this mm -hmm. bike. And it, him riding uh, on, uh, you know, on the uh, on the other bikes on the 250s uh, for the last year and a half seemed like he was always kind of struggling with something. But with this bike, this is more of this uh, uh, this style and the technique that I came to know from him when he was an amateur, and he looks uh, he looks fit for this bike here. Oh, and he might squeeze off Simmons. Simmons did everything Ooh. he could to get him. Wow. I, well, they I, tried to ride a wide bike, but it wasn't wide enough, and Smith got through. I, I, I wish I could somehow put into words how difficult that whoop section, the <laughs> jump section is before the finish. I mean, the images, these guys make it look easy. But I'm telling you what that does to your body, how much core strength you have to have, and just, it, oh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling it in the getting broadcast booth here. I'm getting tired already. Yeah, although it's 65 degrees in our booth. I wonder how Aaron Bates feels outside in the heat. Meanwhile, two generations of Australians here going at it. You got Simmons, who, like we said, is a teenager. Byrne, who is over age 30, battling for 12th and 13th. Well, and the burner here. Uh-oh, two's down. Wow. Big shake up there. This could loom large in points at the end of the year. This gets close. Filippoto not quite able to get back up to speed there either. Well, I'll tell you who is up to speed, and that's my buddy Michael Byrne here. Look at him starting to get comfortable here on this Suzuki. Hasn't had much time to uh, test and practice. Uh, this is his first year with this team, um, so they're trying to get their setting done. But, but just like Les Smith, I really like what I'm seeing out of Byrne's technique, and he's really fluid on the bike. He seems like everything's starting to come together for him. And Simmons also one of those KTM 350s. He's one of the bigger guys out here, but he says he likes that bike. And the fans like what they're watching. Fun Memorial Day weekend race here in Texas. Great racing here. 450 class of Lucas Oil AMA Pro Motocross Championship Racing. And two Australians duking it out. 942 on the orange bike, Ty Simmons. 26 yellow bike Suzuki is Michael Byrne. And they want to put those bikes in the same exact spot, Jeff. And I'll tell you what, Michael Byrne lives down in uh, Tampa, Florida now. Him and Reed uh, train together. And he says it's so hot and so humid down there in Florida that it makes coming to uh, this race seem like a cool afternoon uh, uh, you know, of uh, motocross racing. So it's kind of one of those situations where your hard work and the hard days are during the week try to make race day easier. Man, it is not easy to get by Simmons. He has proven stubborn for Les Smith, now for Michael Byrne. Ooh, ooh. Got the hops, did not get the right <laughs> sequence. That's because he had to go to the right through that little dog leg, and there's one extra jump on the right-hand side. He pulled up next to Simmons and uh, just couldn't make it past Simmons. Holding tough. Holding tough is Ryan Dungey. Also, is a big lead now over Chad Reed, 21 seconds. So way to respond for Dungey after taking a beating from Reed last week. And, and, and look just to the back of Dungey. I, I saw Kyle Chisholm, who took a really hard hit in the first moto. Good to see him back on the bike. Progressive whole shot replay here. 
That's Metcalf sweeping, and he's going to get it. Take us through that. All the way through. He just really gated. I mean, about 50 feet out of the gate. It was nothing but that yellow fender way out front. Now we have another yellow fender that's way out front, but uh, this time it's got the number one plate, the red number one plate, which uh, he will sure to keep here yes. uh, if he is able to finish this moto off and win the overall, uh, the moto and the overall. Yeah, we had a little bit of controversy coming into this one. Chad Reed won the race overall last weekend, but he and Dungey tied on points. If you saw our grid earlier, they both had a first and a second in the two races last weekend, so they were tied in the series standings. So they both have that red number plate background signifying that they are the series leader. Reed said, hey, I won the race. I should be the only one to hold the plate. Well, guess what? At our next race at Hot Point in Pennsylvania, they'll still be tied if it ends like this, and they'll still both have the red plate. That's what the rule book says right here. Look but at this look battle, Metcalf and Dietrich. You know Dietrich's going to be strong late in the race. He's used to racing two, three hours off-road. 30-minute moto, nothing for this guy. Yeah, this is nothing here. 35 minutes? Yeah. But I'll tell you what, Dietrich, though, he is really good at motocross. He may be able to go through the trees and through the woods and the desert and all that stuff, but when it comes to this, I mean, he has been exceptional. Uh, he's been a great add to this uh, Valley Motorsports Rockstar Energy Drink Yamaha team. And uh, late in these motos, when it's hot and nasty, it's it, when he really seems to excel. And by the way, while you watch these two battle it out for fourth and fifth, they too have gotten around Ryan Villapoto. You saw uh, Villapoto uh, fell down a couple of laps ago. So now Villapoto losing more points. He is sixth at the moment. As far as the overall today, again, Dungey and Reed would be tied with 2-1 and 1-2. The tiebreaker goes to the better finish in the second moto. So Ryan Dungey is looking at an overall win in Texas unless disaster strikes. And you look at the countdown clock top of the screen. Not much time for that to happen. Yeah, and just I seen it across the top of the screen there with the running order at the very end of it. I saw 36 with Porcel. Tommy Hahn, of course, is out. So wow. Moto Concept Yamaha just really having a tough day after some good qualifying efforts by their riders. Here is Dungey trying to polish this one off. Porcel rode very strong at the beginning of our first motor today, was running second, and then pulled off. Uh, wasn't comfortable. It made major changes to the bike this time. I'll talk about that. Well, they're going to get to do it now because he's not even running, so they can already start washing the bike and making some more changes. Said that they changed the, uh, the offset of the triple clamps, which extended the bike out a little bit and uh, didn't pay off in this moto. So Porcel is struggling. Ryan Dungey is not. Let's see if Dungey can hold on and win his first overall of the year. Dungey has a big lead here late in the second moto, but he is slowing dramatically and I believe coming to a stop. Oh. Jeff Emig, it's over. The bike has stopped and Ryan Dungey's race win, points lead, moto win, it's all about to go out the door. Where is Chad Reed, who is second? Where is he? Still has not caught Dungey. See a couple of the Honda technicians run over there. There's your new leader. Unbelievable. Now we mentioned mechanical troubles for a lot of riders so far this year, but nothing that dramatic. Dungey had a 25 second lead and Chad Reed is going to inherit this one. Wow, I tell you, when things are going your way, they're just going your way. And let's not forget, Team Honda on all of the bikes, on the whole team. See Chad Reed looking back like, wait, was that Dungey? That Dungey? Yeah. Uh, team Honda chose to put brand new engines, newly rebuilt engines in for each moto. Uh, wow. I don't know if Suzuki made the same decision, but the bike has expired. Engine problems for Ryan Dungey and Chad Reed down. It, it, I think I you hit the nail on the head. Last year, it seemed like there anything that could go right for Dungey. Well, let's go down to Aaron. What have you got on the, on the number one? I spoke with Mike Gosler, Ryan Dungey's mechanic, and asked him if they made any fine tuning in between motos. He said only thing they did was one minor click with suspension, and that's just something they do every every moto, but uh, nothing was changed whatsoever. And at this point, they might have wished they did. Wow, and you can see the, frustra the frustration wow. on Dungey's face, the sense of urgency. He watches points go by when he has just an unbelievable ride. 
dominating Moto2 slip away. And when you do that much work during the week, when you train and you just suffer through all of that and you're putting together this type of ride, those moments, that, the moment that he's experiencing right now are so frustrating. It's on the pit board for Reed from his mechanic Lars, Dungey out. You talk about hard work during the week, hard work during the race. Dungey led it for 30 minutes in the heat on a rough track. He outdoed Chad Reed. It's now over. And you alluded to it before, when things are going your way, they seem to roll like that. Last year, it seemed like Dungey and Suzuki could do nothing wrong. And now, every time they're building momentum, it goes well, the other and way. I, and I tell you what, we're not going to have to worry about the controversy of who runs the red plate now, because 22, if this bike makes it all the way, he's going to be your all-out points leader. Yeah, no doubt about that. So, Chad Reed. Got about half a lap to go. He's got to be as surprised as anyone. And uh, started out the year as really as a true privateer. Was doing it with help from a pro circuit and a couple of others. There is Dungey. Now Reed's got the full factory team Honda help. They have mechanical troubles in the first moto at Wyndham, so it's equal opportunity this series. But for Dungey, this is going to be a so major hole of points to dig out of. Well, if there's anybody that can do it, it, it it's Dungy. He yeah. showed here in the late in the second moto when it's hot and all that that he was up to the task. Oh. I think Chad Reed is right there on pace. They obviously were, were going to split motos again here today, and uh, it looked like we were going to have a points tie at the end of this. Yeah. But uh, hey, this is part of it. 24 motos, uh, the most grueling sport in the world, and uh, with the best riders in the world, we call it AMA Motocross. And you might say, man, how could they let this happen? But it is impossible to replicate this type of heat and intensity when you're testing these motors. You really don't know until you go racing. Yeah, and this, these four-stroke engines just run at such a higher temperature. There's so many more moving parts and so many things that can fail as opposed to the old two-strokes. Chad Reed, just like last he's week, he's keep looking back like, wait a second, am I going to win this thing again? Wow. That should move Millsaps up to second, and Ricky Dietrich might just be on the podium by the time this one is over. Checkered flag coming out. Chad Reed wins in Freestone, and he did it thanks to bad luck for Ryan Dungey. So here's the hero, your winner, and there is unfortunately the zero as far as points go. Ryan Dungey and his mechanic, Mike Gosler, and I cannot remember the last time in an outdoor motocross race, one of Mike Gosler's bikes didn't make it to the finish line. He wow. is one of the all-time great wrenches. Chad Reed wins. Maximum points today. Incredible turn of events. That's why they run the races. <sighs> what more can you say, Gossler? What more can you say, Dungy? We'll be back next week. Speed coverage of the Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship is brought to you by Progressive Insurance, number one in motorcycle insurance. And by Rockstar Energy Drink. Rockstar Energy Drink supports the active Rockstar lifestyle and is now available in 18 amazing flavors and 19 countries worldwide. Well, it's here Lucas Oil AMA Pro Moto Cross Championship from Texas. Chad Reed has won this race. That might not be a surprise. It's the way he won it that will shock you, and we'll show you it in our Lucas Oil race recap. Off the start, it was Rockstar Makita Suzuki's number 24, Brett Metcalf. But on the first lap, Dungey comes out with some serious aggression and just blisters out in this moto. And then He's got problems it. with the bike. The Suzuki expires. Problems with the engine. Huh. He tries kicking it. But to no avail, Dungey would not finish Moto2, and he was a lap and a quarter away from the win. So Chad Reed was running second the entire race, inherits the lead and takes the win, looks down at his bike to make sure that was still running. It held together, definitely tough conditions to race in today with the heat and humidity and all that strain of the motors at this speed. Reed wins, Millsaps and Ricky Dietrich up on the podium. Christian Craig bounces back, two solid motos today for him in seventh. Wyndham 8th, Burn and Nick Way ran out the top 10. Let's send it down to Aaron with our winner. What a day for Chad Reed. Even though, Chad, you ended up having a crash on your own, did it surprise you at all costs there when you saw Dungy down? What was going through your mind? No, I saw him down, and uh, I don't think he actually crashed. I think something happened to the bike, so that's that's a bummer, man. He was he was on at that one, and we were looking like we were going to have a good moto, and I just made a mistake. I just I changed up a line a little bit. It was a little wetter than I anticipated. The thing just kind of went full lock and then just threw me sideways and I crashed. So uh, 
a little bummer. And then after that, you know, I had a little bit of, you know, put a bit of a spurt in, but he was just too strong. And uh, with crash, and I just decided it was smart to ride it out. And as it turned out, you know, I went 1-1 on the day. But uh, Dungy won that one in my mind, man. Good, good job. I hate to see a tough competitor go out like that. Yesterday, you and the crew, you guys went fishing. How much does that help going out and having a little bit of fun, taking off some of the pressure? You know, my wife said when we were going racing in the outdoors, she's like, you're only doing it, and I'm only going to support it if you're going to go have fun. You know, don't worry about the results. Just go have fun and enjoy racing. You know, that's what it's been about in 2011, and won or all. So it uh, feels good. You know, I felt like I had the pace. I had good starts all day, and just uh, hats off to the 2 2 Motorsports, all the guys at American Honda. Schiff, Fox, man, Mitch Payton at Pro Circuit, and uh, like I said, just have a blast, and I feel like I'm doing that. Congratulations on having fun and letting it pay off. So Chad Reed undefeated early here in 2011. Here are the other events he'll try to win. Upcoming schedule brought to you by Toyota. We'll be on NBC from Mount Morris, Pennsylvania on June 12th, 4 p.m. Eastern. Then uh, Bud's Creek in Mechanicsville, Maryland, also back on speed. June 18th, next week, Mile High in Colorado. And then Red Bud for July 4th weekend on NBC. Well, the Reed fans got what they wanted today, a victory out of him. Took a little bit of luck. Hey, Ryan sometimes you're racing. Back. You need yeah. to be lucky, right? Hey, you'd rather be lucky than good when you get two moto wins like this. We'll be back with more from Texas. Stay with us. 12,000 pounds, 11 feet tall, and 1,500. This championship is brought to you by Lucas Oil. Made in America, sold to the world. And by the 2011 Toyota Tundra, one of the most capable half tons ever. Welcome back to your second moto coverage here on Speed and a bit of a shakeup. We thought Ricky Dietrich had taken third in this moto. Turns out that there was a transponder scoring malfunction for Brett Metcalf, who actually did finish third in that moto. Once they crossed the finish line, then we knew that Metcalf had gotten third. But in front of them, Davey Millsaps in second. Aaron, take it away. A very strong ride for Davey Millsaps today. Davey, after coming back from injury like you had last year and be able to overcome this and make it up to the podium on one of the most grueling tracks ever, what does this do for your confidence moving forward? You know, uh, it was a tough race. And uh, first, first mud I uh, got first and then this, or sorry, fourth, and then this moto I got second. So, uh, you know, Dungey went down a couple laps ago, so that helped me out a bunch. But, uh, you know, I'll take it when I can get it. And uh, I just can't thank James Yard, Muscle Milk, Toyota enough. And, uh, you know, just everyone's been behind me, my mechanic, you know, my wife, everyone, thank you very much. Congratulations on a job well done today. All right, well done by Davey Millsaps. A big shakeup in the standings here because we thought that Reed and Dungey were going to be tied. Dungey's bike breaks, so suddenly Reed gains 25 full points on him, so now Dungey's going to be digging out of the big hole. But he did that earlier in the year in the Supercross series. Yeah, he certainly did, and uh, it, you know it's disappointing. But uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's a it's a long summer. A lot can happen, and uh, you take those points whenever you can get them. And Chad Reed definitely capitalized on that. Another guy scored some points today. Brett Metcalf. Aaron, you got him. Scoring some serious points today, Brett. What a week it was for you. You did the road trip all the way here. You tried to get yourself acclimated, but didn't have the parts in time. Are you happy with today's overall result? Well, yeah, I'm happy with the last moto. It's been a rough start to the season. We had a lot of crashes. We finally worked some stuff out thanks to the Rockstar Makita Suzuki crew. Just so awesome. You know, Thor, Parts Unlimited, Scott, Alpine Stars, Don Joy, Edneys. Everyone, thanks a lot, and uh, happy with that. Today's track was such a rough one. It was really one-lined. How hard was it to make a pass with coming back through the pack? It was a little difficult. You really had to be patient. I learned that in the first moto by crashing twice. In the second moto, I made amends of that, so it was a little better. But you got to be patient and not push too hard. It was a rough track. Obviously, the humidity here in Texas is always the killer, so happy to get through and get a break here. You made it through a rough one. Job well done. Brett, take us through also your injury. You made it back. Are you 100% recovered at this point? Yeah, it feels good now. You know, it took a little while to get going, but uh, out there today, Sakamoto, no problems with my wrist. So it's uh, full steam ahead from here, and no more putting it on the ground. Well, boys, I think these guys are more than happy to have this Texas round behind them. So Brett Metcalf had the long road trip here. He hit a deer with the motorhome. They, as Aaron alluded to, couldn't get all the parts here in time to build a practice bike, so he didn't really get to do much riding. So rough week for Meddy. Finishes it up on the podium. Hey, so building, bu building build blocks for success, that's for sure. <laughs>
Fuel your passion for motorcycle racing with Speed Motorcycle Text Alerts powered by Yamaha. Get the latest motor racing results and breaking news as they become available sent right to your phone. Text MOTO to Speed 3 for the alerts right now. Well, Chad Reed, last year just couldn't get the momentum, couldn't get the ball rolling. This year, he can't help himself. He's winning races even when he's not trying to. Yeah, I mean, that's some great images there, you know, uh, uh, the thrill of victory, agony of defeat for Dungey. So some of the riders that I was really impressed with today was Millsaps, uh, yep. Christian Craig, obviously, uh, Tommy Hahn, and uh, Les Smith, actually, with a couple of pretty good rides. We'll have a weekend off, and then we're back to racing from Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, just south of Pittsburgh. Fuel TV always has the first motos in this series live, so that'll be 1 p.m. Eastern. And Speed will have the 250 class Moto 2 coverage on June the 11th, Saturday night. So Chad Reed, man, he's smiling. He's got a lot of fans here. Just an incredible season so far for Reed. This is this guy who was on the verge of retirement six months ago, and here he is winning races and leading the championship. Hey, I'll say it. said it last week. I'll say it again. Attitude is everything. Chad Reed is in the right place. He's riding for the right reasons, and it shows his passion for the sport. And uh, we still got 10 more races to go. Oh, yeah, you're going to hear it from the rest of these guys. Villapoto, Dungey, uh, Metcalf, Millsaps. There are going to be some challengers for race wins. Heartbreaker for Ryan Dungey today. Don't worry, he'll keep fighting. For Aaron Bates, Jeff Fennig, I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for watching, and congratulations to Chad Reed.